This is a Feldenkrais lesson. What the heck is that, you might say? Well, I didn't know either before this whole thing, but it ended up changing me in a million different ways. So get down on the floor, lay down, get comfy, because this is an action-based, play-along-with-us kind of episode. An adventure back into your body and past with Paul Poiwali. So, Paul, you're about to give me my first Feldenkrais lesson, and the listeners yes. might be like, Feldenkrais? Frankenstein? What is going on? So, um, <laughs> before we get into the actual lesson, which everyone can obviously um, play along with and, and do the movements, we can all do it together. What the heck is Feldenkrais? What are we about to do? <sighs> Wow, that's a really big question. Well, um, Feldenkrais is a sensory motor education or a method of sensory motor education. And I really wanted to um, have you experience a Feldenkrais, uh, what we call an awareness through movement lesson, before we really got into the talking, because I think um, it might be the first time that I've been interviewed by someone who has no experience or little experience of Feldenkrais and um, they can be you know we can talk about things and we would share beautiful words but once you have actually experienced the lesson moving and exploring movements um, then you would have much more grounding more of a basis for the 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 words you know to really resonate into something meaningful so uh, yeah as soon as you said, okay, let's have this podcast, and I thought, okay, it it will make much more sense um, after you've done the lesson and also for your um, audience, your listeners, to hear your experience firsthand. And I think that that would be actually the, um, the, the beauty of this uh, encounter between you and me. <laughs> Yeah, this is beautiful. This is so exciting. I get to basically get beyond words, which I've always wanted to do, and I sometimes do, um, but mm. it's kind of a rare experience. So let's uh, just get into the pure experience, and then we can talk about it and analyze it like a normal human, right? But let's just let's get back to our <laughs> primordialness, right? Okay. Um, yeah, to start, I'll. Uh, this is my first time, so I have no idea what I'm about to do. Um, just kind of guide me along, and I'll, yeah. Yeah. Um, so do you have a place where you can lie down? Kind of. I might need to move this thing. Uh-huh. Um, I live in Japan, so there's not... Like, I know, I know. <laughs> um, you have to lie down, don't you? Okay, uh, give me a second. Let me reorganize this whole thing. Huh. Podcasting is not set up for lying down, is it? Uh, <laughs> I should have told you before. No, no, no. no this, this is part of the fun, right? Um, I'm sure mm -hmm. everyone's loving listening to me finding a space in my room uh yeah i'm just gonna move i'm gonna move this and woo. <laughs> mm -hmm. um i'm just gonna get on my futon on my bed basically uh but this needs to go or if it's like too much i we can also do a lesson in in sitting maybe that would um the sitting might be, might be easier because it's just um yeah. Do I, will, I, will I be talking much or is it mostly? Uh... No, uh, you might, you know, if you have like certain remarks or something. Um, Maybe I can, but... um, yeah, cause, like the whole, it's all kind of tied up over here. But, yeah. Uh, give me a second. Um, I might just move this chair and it's, mm -hmm. it's okay if I kind of like lie this way and I can't, I can't, if I, I have to see you though? No, no, no. You don't have to see me. I don't have to, okay. Because if I have to see you, that's a different, okay. I'm just going to move this in and, and, and go over here. <laughs> it's much better if you're it's much better if you're lying down right it's different i mean i'm you know i think this is also this is something i can already um speak about the feldenkrais method where we were told that feldenkrais uh had this uh respect or appreciation for lazy people because they're able to do a lot with very little effort. And um, so as a dancer, uh, that was quite revolutionary where you were um, actually in a more optimal learning attitude mode when you allow yourself to be lazy. And uh, that's also a learning experience for people, how to do less, allow themselves to do less. So lying on the floor is, it's just very lazy. And um, I hope 
people will kind of get hooked on Feldenkrais because it's this thing that you do sort of like in a napping like um, state. So you really don't have to actually underdoing uh, can oftentimes give you uh, a much bigger uh, sensation of yourself. So lying on the floor, yeah. Basically, I want to say like lying on the floor, being all uh, easy, comfortable um, during the lesson, that can be very beneficial. Okay, so doing kind of no work, just do I, should I have a pillow or something? Or just, uh, just, just kind of lay down like naturally without <laughs> anything? If you have a pillow... So just to prepare you a bit, we... I don't, I don't care either way. Yeah, yeah, But you will be... Uh, we will be doing the lesson mainly lying on your side. So um, oh. if you want to have a pillow for your head, that might be a very good idea. Some people can just lay on their sides with um, their head resting on the floor. Or, I can lay on my side. Or... I'm just going to keep it, keep it simple. Yeah. Or you can have your arm underneath your head because the idea is that you don't push through and you're really trying to be um, picky because you want to uh, heighten your sensory awareness in order to to see are there um, better ways of moving and organizing yourself. So if you're going to strain your neck in order to rest, um, to be on your side, you know, then it's best to put uh, for the learning experience, it's much better to have a cushion or your arm underneath your head. Make sense? Uh, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So let's go. Guide me along. Yep. So start lying on your back. And just take a moment to... So you can lie on your back with your legs long, have your arms also long by your side. So it's somewhat like how you would be standing. Yeah. But again... These are very loose instructions throughout all Fallen Christ lessons that um, you don't need to be very strict. Yeah, you try to meet the instruction as um, well as you can. But see, where would you have your arms roughly by your sides? Your legs can be long. And some people um, who have chronic back pain, it might actually be painful to have their legs long. So you can have the option uh, of bending your knees and having your feet standing uh, on the floor just to relieve some of that um, pressure on the back. So just feel how much contact you're making with the floor. We're doing an initial scan. See, are you? do you feel most of you is sunk into the floor? Are you feeling most of you is kind of um, propped up away from the ground? And that gives you an idea of how your nervous system is um, activating your, your muscles, your musculature. And just see, you don't need to change anything. Observe how you're breathing. Are there things that stick out to you? Like maybe you feel one leg is longer. Is the other one feeling shorter? How about the length of your arms? How do the two arms compare in length and how they rest on the floor? And how much of your spine, your back, is resting on the ground? And please don't think that you must push for things to rest on the floor, that your nervous system, I always say your nervous system is amazing. It's brilliant. It has, um, it does its best to find a version of balance for you. So wherever you are, it is a version of good, unless it's giving you pain and then you make an adjustment. But yeah, I find it's, um, it can be stressful for people to relax. So it's not about just relaxing, but seeing, is there room to be more comfortable, to be more you, more fully you? And then begin by, and the movements are always, you approach them with uh, a slower speed and be very gentle. 
Yeah. Can you, in this very gentle and slow manner, begin to roll your head a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left, taking your time. And it's just so that you can detect, oh, is it or feel, is it easier rolling your head to one side or to another? Yeah. And you don't need to force yourself to go beyond. Um, where it really feels effortless. So it can be a small movement. Yeah. So because I can't see you, I'm just checking in. Can you feel that there's a difference turning, uh, rolling your head to the right or to the left? Yeah, I feel this, it's slightly easier to move to the right. Mm -hmm. But it's not a huge difference, but... Okay. Yeah. Yep. Great. And it's these small um, differences, being able to detect these small differences that actually give you that um, sensitivity to know what you're doing and to be able to do things in different ways. So now we've done this initial scan. So can I get you to roll onto your left side? and make yourself comfortable. So see if you want the left arm underneath your head, or do you want to rest the head on the floor or fold up the arm underneath the head? And then have your knees bent as well. So have them bent up the right knee on top of the left knee. Yeah, as if you're about to nap, but see, can you be on your side? So the right shoulder would be directly above your left shoulder. Yeah something like that and then now we're going to change one thing can you extend your right leg downwards so as if you were standing on something so the right leg would be long sort of in the same line as your as your spine to your head and you would flex in your right ankle as if you were um, standing yeah, and you want the inside edge of your right foot to be on the floor and always in contact with the floor. So see if you can find a comfortable position like that right leg long down underneath you as if you're standing. And see, maybe you have to have it just a little bit forwards. Yeah, so you're not pulling too much on the side of your right hip, your spine. Yeah, and if you're completely lost, just ask me. Yeah. And now keeping your right... Do I touch my right foot on the floor? Or it's yeah. Elevated? The right foot is uh, resting with the entire inside edge on the floor. So the big toe of the right foot and the inside of the right heel would be on the floor. Yeah. Does it make sense? Okay. And so... Yeah, I'm there. Yeah, great. So again, be very easy um, in... A comfortable position and now without bending your right knee can you begin or and not moving in your ankle itself can you begin to slide your right foot a bit down and away from your head so the direction opposite to your head down and away as if you were pushing this imaginary floor a bit away and then softly bring it back and you're just going to do this little morsel of movement. And see, can you just let whatever can rest to rest so you're using the least amount of effort possible? And here's where the uh, laziness can seep in. Just doing a very soft movement. And notice how the this movement of sliding the right foot downwards, sliding it along the floor, in other words, you're lengthening the right leg and then bringing it back to where you started. See that this is not a movement of just your right leg alone. Can you feel where else you are moving? So see, how does this actually affect tug into your spine as you slide the right foot down and away, come up? And does this have anything to do with your neck? your head. So your neck and head might not be 
completely um, static. And if you tune into your chest, what's, is there something moving in your chest to allow this lengthening of the right leg downwards? Yeah. And you can tune into the sliding, the sensation of sliding of your right foot along the floor, down and away. And the most important movement of all is actually your breathing. So don't sacrifice your breathing just for this silly movement. Yeah. And can you feel that your pelvis surely is moving? You're rolling over the left side of your pelvis, the, out, the, um, the side of your pelvis, which is resting on the floor now. So the pelvis moves a bit like a wheel. And so when you are lengthening your right foot down and away, you can also feel that the left waist, your waistline on the left side comes a bit away from the floor. And as you return the right foot to where you started, then the waist also just sinks a bit back towards the ground. Yeah. Making it super easy thinking that you can allow the rest of your body to be supple. Okay. And then just take a break from that. Lie on your back again. And once you're on your back, see if there are some things that feel a bit funny or different. How is the length of your right leg now? And since you've been lengthening that, does it actually feel longer than your left now? Or do you feel that it has gotten shorter, but something might have changed there? And if you compare the two sides of your back, are there places that are meeting the floor differently? Is the right side of you kind of feeling more sunken or lower into the floor? How's your right shoulder? And then just gently again, go back to rolling your head from side to side, slowly. And the slowness is also so that you don't spook your nervous system and get it into a defensive mode. But yeah, see, is there something different about, or is there new ease in how you roll the head now side to side? And if it might be easier to the right, or has it improved rolling your head to the left? Okay. So, so far so good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so come back onto your left side and come into the same position. So your left leg will be bent up and have the left foot also um, not touching your right leg, which is extended long down underneath you, flexing in the right ankle. And then... Now, this time, have your right arm lying on your side, if you can. Yeah, so the right arm is, the right hand would be touching the outside of your right thigh. See if you can find that position. And just go back to lengthening your right leg downwards again. So just to remind you, you're not flexing and pointing in the foot, in the ankle. It's not a movement. So it's as if your, your foot and uh, your ankle would be in a cast. It doesn't move. And you're finding from a, a way to use your ribs, your spine, your torso, your neck and head, everything above to f elongate that right leg downwards, sliding the right foot downwards and then coming back. So there's a bit of like this um, lull. Um, quality to the movement, being very gentle. So now, instead of lengthening the right foot without bending the right knee, 
can you begin to slide the right foot upwards towards you, towards your head? So you're moving the right leg in the opposite direction. And do that a few times. So you slide it up and you can do just maybe one centimeter of movement and then go back and see what it's like to do the opposite movement. So now you're shortening the right leg by sliding the right foot up, but you keep the right knee straight. Yeah. And can you make this as easy as possible? It doesn't need to be a huge movement whatsoever. And see now what happens to the left side of your waist. Can you feel that it sinks down into the floor more in order to pull the right leg up? Yeah, and you just go back and forth a few times. What might help is also to think that this is a massage that you're giving yourself to all of your joints. So see, how does your spine respond now? Does your right foot sliding up towards, towards your head actually push through the pelvis, the right hip joint, through the spine, up through the chest, neck, and head? And then as you return the foot to its original place, then everything settles back to where you started as well. So just do that gently. And now can you combine both directions? So you slide the right foot down and away a bit, and then you slide it up. And as you're doing these movements, I find off, oftentimes it's like a meditation. So you're able to um, send or spread your attention to other places. So if you just pay attention to what your head and neck are doing in response to this movement, then perhaps the sliding of the right foot actually gets better because you found another link in the chain of movement. Breathing easily, feeling the left side of your waist, when does it come away from the floor? When does it come down to the floor? So we're coming to the same movement from different details. And then just go a little faster, a little bit looser, keeping the right, the inside of the right foot on the floor, sliding it down and away, up towards your head, and then take another rest on your back. just see how everything feels. How's your whole right side compared to the left? And how is your breathing at this point? Is there actually a difference in how you feel your breath happening on the right side compared to the left side? So, you know, um, some people say these fancy things like, oh, your walking or your feet are related to your, your breathing. Um, and I think that after a lesson like this, you might be able to fill in um, an actual experience to these words, another meaning. And just roll your head gently right and left, see how that feels. Okay, so please come on to your other side. So come on to your right side. And this time you're going to have the left leg long underneath you. F flex in that left ankle. And make sure that the uh, left shoulder is over the right shoulder. Make yourself comfortable. 
So for those who are listening, you can also do this um, with a cushion underneath your head. Remember, you can use your right arm underneath your head. Yeah, find a napping um, position for yourself. And then we can start learning better from there. So now, can you just revisit this movement of sliding the left foot downwards and then sl- and then already start sliding it up yeah and go with a small movement to start so with each repetition you are becoming clearer about how you're actually doing this lengthening of the left leg then the shortening of it and you can sort of trick yourself by to 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 move your body by by feeling the quality of that brushing of that left foot the inside of the left foot down along the floor away from the head and up towards your head still staying on the floor making it even pleasurable See that your jaw doesn't need to be stiff. Your breath comes in and out whenever it wants. And then if you want, you can go a bit bigger with this movement. And see, the when you lengthen the left foot down, how does the right side of your waist come further away from the floor? And then as you slide the left foot up towards you, then the right side of your waist begins to sink to the floor. And can you feel that this is not just a movement inside your left hip joint, the so-called active leg that is moving, but you're moving very much in the bottom hip joint, the right one. So there's movement between your pelvis and the right thigh bone as you're doing, or in order to do this movement. Yeah. So just going where it's easy, and then you'll see the movement begins to just um, get bigger, more fuller on its own. And feel when does the left side of your neck feel like it is lengthening the skin along the left side of your neck when does it become more bunched up yeah and then just go a little bit faster easier so you're using this sliding and remember you're not um bending and extending the the left knee the left knee stays always straight the left leg is always long and you find this movement of lengthening and shortening that left leg okay and then take another rest rest on your back And once on your back, feel any further changes? Is it something about your left hip joint, the left leg that feels different? Or do you notice how your chest and shoulders, they might be um, feeling very different? And then softly, just go back to rolling your head. And can you notice something changing there? Would your head be rolling easier now? And if you don't notice any big differences, don't worry where there's still more of the lesson and um, yeah it's very different for um, 
for different people. Yeah. So please come back onto your left side. So the first side that we started with. And can you <clears throat> still have the right arm long, resting on your side, but you're going to switch the legs, meaning that before we had the right leg long, extended underneath us, now that's going to be the leg that is bent. So the right knee will be bent in front of you. And then the left uh, leg, which is the leg lying on the floor, will be uh, extended downwards. And so now with the left, uh, the right knee bent in front of you, have the right foot also on the floor in front of that long left leg. And can you also find this uh, flex in the right ankle? So it's still like you're standing on, on a surface. Yeah, so the inside edge of your right foot is resting on the floor in front of the left leg, which is long. And now, again, gently, we're going to, can you slide the right knee a little bit forwards and then come back to where you started and just explore that for a few times yeah, taking your time and making it a smooth movement. Yeah, as much as you can. So these movements do not have to be performed perfectly. You're just trying to understand, hmm, what do I feel when I do this? What else moves? Do you move the right shoulder forwards and back with the, in the same direction as the knee? Yeah. You see, is there something about your back that moves and gauges as you slide the right knee forwards? Is there movement inside your chest and your spine? Yeah. And then take a pause, still on your side. Now slide your right knee a bit backwards towards you and allow it to be a small movement at first. Yeah, and what does it feel like in your back? when you slide the right knee back towards you. Yeah. So you are moving, you're rolling in your pelvis, but in a different way now, right? The right buttock goes backwards and then comes back over the, um, the left side of your pelvis. So now combine the two movements, um, the two directions. Slide the right knee forwards and slide it backwards. So with your right knee, if it had some paint on it, it would just be making this straight line away from you and towards you, forwards and back. And can you let your breath just find its rhythm to this movement. Yeah, it doesn't need to move at the same uh, speed as your knee. So your breath has its own rhythm, the knee can move at, on its own rhythm. So we're getting outside of certain habits that in some um, methods it's always in one direction you inhale in the other direction you exhale but in final christ we also explore to see can the breath just happen on its own time overlapping that with another rhythm of the the movement that we're exploring yeah and then um, can you switch your legs again? Stay on your left side, but now extend the right leg down long and have the left knee bent forwards. And so the, the left leg doesn't uh, touch the right leg. So the right leg is free. And flex in the right ankle again. So with your right leg always long, now feel the inside um, edge of your right foot on the floor and especially the inside of the right heel yeah and now can you with that point um 
of the inside of your right heel, can you start making a small circle on the floor? So now if you put paint uh, on the inside of your right heel, and now without bending your right knee, keeping the right leg long, can you find a way to make a circle, paint a circle with your right heel on the floor? Yeah, and see which direction have you gone in? Are you riding a bicycle or tiny, tiny bicycle forwards? Is it, are you riding the bicycle backwards in reverse? And see how is, how are you moving in the left waist and your ribs, your chest? When do you feel your head being pulled down? And when do you feel a upward push through your spine from the right foot. So start small and then you can get gradually a bit bigger. And see, where does the circle that you're painting on the floor, when does it become less round? Yeah. So that might indicate a place in your back, in your torso that hasn't uh, found its place yet. Yeah. But when you then have your attention on the places that are less round, maybe they become rounder. So change the direction of your circle, keeping the right knee straight. Make the circle on the floor with your right heel, the inside of your right heel, in the opposite direction. And you can have the whole inside edge of your foot just resting on the floor as you do this. Breathing. Feel, do you notice other circles somewhere else? Somewhere else around your body. How is your head, the left side of your face on whatever it's resting on? How's the pressure changing against the left side and the floor in order for you or as a result of you making this circle? So take a rest. Rest on your back again. And remember if... Um, because I can't see you. If you have any questions, then please just uh, let me know. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm still here. Yeah. Excellent. Great. You didn't kill me yet. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Quite the opposite. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay let's, let's, keep, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Oh, Lovely. So let's come on to the other side. So lie on your right side again. Organize your right arm in whichever way is most comfortable. And then it, can you have the uh, top leg, so the left leg bent up in front of you. The right leg would be long. And have the left arm resting on your side. Yeah, so the left hand, the left wrist is over your, your pelvis. And so now with the left knee, can you begin to slide it a bit forwards and then backwards? And see if you can really nerd out on the, how you even initiate the movement. Yeah, do you just sort of roll with your whole torso forwards and backwards to um, move that left knee forwards and backwards, sliding it on the floor? Or do you feel, can you just take a pause and then just do the initial like gram of um, effort and see what happens actually in your back? Yeah. So this becomes a really fun thing with all Fallen Christ lessons. It's like, what, how do you even start the movement? Yeah. So maybe with, with back, because the, the um, 
the ribs, they articulate with the spine. So when I say back, are you not also feeling that the ribs are moving somehow? How are the ribs on your left side moving in order to slide the left knee forwards and backwards? Yeah. And can you allow this movement to serve as the background and then be, uh, sense how you are breathing? See, how does the air even enter into, into you? Is it through your nose, your nostrils? Is it through your mouth? So the breathing is easy and you slide the left knee forwards and backwards, making it smoother, more comfortable. And see, can you, can you um, slide the knee uh, equally forwards and backwards? So again, you might need to do a smaller movement because what um, happens with a lot of people is that the emphasis is on sliding the left knee uh, forwards a lot and then the left knee doesn't really come back. So you want to give a chance for that left hip joint to um, to go backwards. Yeah, see if it can, it depends on the, um, the dimensions of your pelvis, but see, is it possible to also have that left hip joint come a bit back um, behind that right hip joint on the floor? And notice what, if your right leg, which is long, is also following this sliding forwards and backwards of your left knee. So in other words, what else participates in you with the movement of the left knee? And just make it a little bit faster, easier. Yeah, allow yourself to, even though I'm saying smooth and less effort, breathe, it's actually a lot. And sometimes you just have to say, you know, I'm going to have a rough draft, make it rough, and it will refine itself. Yeah, once the nervous system senses, oh, maybe it can be better this way. Oh, the third, fourth time, mm, I'm feeling this, and you'll see that it gradually begins to improve. Okay, so switch your legs again. Have the left leg long, right leg is bent up in front, not touching your left leg. The left ankle is flexed and remains flexed. Um, and your left knee also doesn't bend, yeah? Can you paint this circle on the floor with your left heel? And just whatever direction you have chosen, stick with that for a while and observe, feel what else moves with it. And if you notice the opposite end of the world within you, does that actually help the left heel slide in this circle a bit better? So noticing your neck and head, your shoulders, the ribs. When does the right side of your waist come away from the floor? When does it come down into the floor? Yeah. And it might be helpful to think that you're actually doing this on a beach in sand so that there is a bit of texture to this um, circling of the left heel, the inside of the left heel on the floor. And then change the direction of the circle you're making on the floor with the left foot. Yeah, and what does smooth mean to you? What images, what words will inspire a smoothness in your movements? I like to go to a creamy movement, thinking about creaminess in movement. So as you do this, feel how your ribs are not only for breathing, but they're also there to facilitate the 
movements of your left leg. Lengthening down, shortening up, and then going a bit forwards and backwards. And yeah, once you've had enough, roll over onto your back again and take another rest. And you might be thinking, why are we taking all these rests that some people ask? Well, we haven't really done much, have we? Um, well, it's a chance for you to appreciate what is changing, what is uh, actually feeling better from these movements. And it also helps your nervous system to just refresh, um, stay fresh, uh, to be aware, uh, to be able to sense later on in the explorations. And I think that we are in, in, in our modern societies, we work, we work, we work, we work, and that becomes a habit. But then the productivity of rest is also um, not so much part of our culture, and that becomes uh, a habit. So the seeing these rests as also um, nourishing and constructive for one's development, uh, for the brain to also digest and process. I think that this is uh, very important. And now just roll your head a little bit from side to side. See if that's changed from the very beginning. How does your chest feel on the floor? How are you and your hips? the length of your legs, your arms, how are your shoulders now? Okay. And can you come back to your right side? Yeah, so where we just left off. Have the both knees bent up this time. So you have the left one over the right. And this is usually the... Um, a position that eases the uh, the back, especially the lower back. It's the most restful for most people. And then um, have the left arm, again, resting on your side. So resting on your torso. And now, in a very small movement, delicate, small movement, very little effort, can you begin to bring the left shoulder towards your head and back? Simply that. The left shoulder a bit up towards your head and then back. And then can you let this movement grow and make it, yeah, see if you can actually get a sense of the left shoulder blade sliding over your ribs. So the left shoulder blade is actually behind right now the uh, ribs of your chest. And see where does it feel a little bit um, sticky, uh, rickety, and where does it feel like there is this sliding quality? Yeah. And just feel how the left shoulder gets closer to your ear and then back away. Is there anything you feel along the left side of your chest, the left ribs, as you do this? What happens to your neck? Yeah. Making this very soft, letting go of what el whatever is not necessary. And then now try the opposite direction. So from the, the starting place of your left shoulder, bring it down away from your head, away from your left ear. And then you come back to where you started and you just do this several times and see now what does your chest do? Is there any movement in the left ribs? Yeah, and if you wanted to go a little bit further with the left shoulder down away from your head, what needs to yield? What feels like it can yield? And then combine both of these directions, sliding the left shoulder up, sliding it down. 
and just notice how the rest of you participates. How does, how do your ribs on your left side, when do they open a bit more? When do they um, bunch up together, close closer together? Yeah. So you're seeing how to get out of your own way. That you have an intention, sliding the left shoulder up, sliding it downwards. And what is getting in the way and what can you allow to participate, to yield, in order for this movement of the left shoulder to feel buttery smooth. Yeah. Or juicy. Pleasurable. And notice how this affects the vertebrae of your neck, the bones of your neck. Your head that is resting. Yeah. And see which direction feels easier, more habitual, natural for you. Raising the left shoulder up to the ear or raising the left bring the left shoulder far away from your head and do you recognize do you recognize yourself in this uh, tendency and then now take a rest with the shoulder stay on your right side can you lengthen the left leg downwards and now so the left leg stays long um, with the inside edge of the left foot resting on the floor, the ankle is flexed. So we're back in this um, initial position. The right arm remains resting on your side. So now, can you combine the left shoulder with the movement of your left foot? So can you bring them in the same direction, bring the left shoulder and the left foot downwards, and then slide the left foot up towards your head, and then bring the left shoulder at the same time towards your head. So essentially, you're sliding your whole left side downwards and upwards. Yeah. And being as restful as you can at this moment, whatever that means for you. Mm -hmm. And see, how are you actually shifting your weight over your right side in order to do this? Okay, now pause. Can you do, can you now move the left shoulder and your left foot in the opposite direction? Yeah. And so what happens when you bring the left shoulder up towards the head and you bring the slide the left foot down, you're lengthening your whole left side, right? And when you bring the left shoulder down, left foot upwards, you're shortening your left side and feel and just continue doing this and see when are you lifting the right side of your waist from the floor? When does it sink, flatten onto the floor? Let your head, your neck just ride this movement, yeah? Easing into it, not making a huge movement at first, but allow it to start small like a seed and then it can gradually grow. And then when you're comfortable with this, make it a little bit faster without feeling stressed. Yeah, just a little bit faster, easier opening and closing the left side. Mm. Pay attention to the left shoulder and the left foot. They move in opposite directions, away from each other, towards each other. Nice and smooth. And are you actually leveraging with the right side which is on the floor somehow that you're not just moving the left side but you're actually assisting with the right side so there's yin and yang okay and then let it go rest on your back Compare your two sides, have a moment of just allowing any differences that you feel to surface. 
You can roll your head just to feel if there are any further improvements, changes. So maybe by now you see that the, the neck um, is, is not only for the mobility of the head, but it's also for the, uh, the freedom, the articulation of the legs. So come on to the other side, to your left side, and have both of your legs bent up, right knee on top of the left, and then have your right arm resting on your side, on your right side. And then just feel this point of zero, of just resting. And then begin to slide your right shoulder a bit up. Come back to where you started and then slide down. And don't let this um, gentle movement um, actually inhibit your breathing. Just really, really be easy about it. Maybe you use more effort at first and then you start to um, discard more and more of that effort. So sliding, gliding the right shoulder blade up and down. And feel that your right collarbone is actually moving with the right shoulder. That in fact, your, your shoulders, they only articulate back to your skeleton via this um, sternoclavicular joint where the collarbone joins your sternum, your breastbone. And you can either just sense it or you can touch the right um, collarbone. Yeah, and feel the ribs, yeah, the right side of your ribs. When do they fold? When do they lengthen, spread apart from each other? So I always encourage people who come to my class to be bad students, but be amazing learners. So you might have to do what feels like breaking the rules in order to find um, the movement, in order to find the options that suit you and not someone else, another body. Yeah. And see, are there any places that feel sticky in this sliding of the shoulder up and down? And then with each repetition, because you're using your awareness, your, your nervous system is also giving you the sensory feedback. It gets better because you're giving it the chance to be a manager, to actually observe what it's doing and then improve on it. Okay, so take uh, just a pause, stay on your left side, lengthen the right leg downwards, have the inside of the right foot resting on the floor, right ankle flexed, keeping the right leg, the right knee always straight, begin to slide the right foot and your right shoulder down, and then right shoulder up, right foot slides up. So your whole right side slides down together and up together. Again, sneaking into this movement. You see, how can you make this easier, even fun? Being very gentle, kind to yourself, finding a rhythm that suits you. And so see, as you slide the right side of you up and down, how are you sensing the left side? So it starts maybe with a sensation rather than actually being able to write a textbook about what's happening on your left side. So just feel where's your weight, how is your weight shifting, sensing the right side of your neck, when does it lengthen, when does it get shorter. And then pause, and now bring your right shoulder and your right foot away from each other and towards each other. Yeah, so approaching the instruction um, in your way. So it doesn't have to be perfect, yeah. So right shoulder, 
up, right foot down, to get, and then they come towards each other together. Opening and closing the right side. And so with your right foot, you can also think that you're pushing something away. It's like a toy on the floor. You're pushing it, nudging it away, and then with the right shoulder, it comes towards your head. And then see how that actually lifts the left side of your waist away from the floor, and then you bring the left. And as you bring the right shoulder and the right foot towards each other, then you press more of the right waist, uh, sorry, the left waist on the floor. So the left waist is raising and lowering, letting your head come for the ride, making it very pleasant for yourself. And then try it a little bit faster. Open, close, open, close. See if it becomes a more familiar movement. And then go back to sliding your entire right side down and up. So the right shoulder and right foot move in the same direction. Okay, and take a pause or take a rest. Rest on your back. And feel whatever you feel. So please come onto your right side again. And throughout Feldenkrais lessons, I didn't um, say it in the beginning, but it, it goes back to this being a good learner, but a bad student. If you need to rest um, much earlier than I uh, propose, feel free to do that. You do as little as you want. You do as much as you want without uh, going overboard. Yeah. Allow yourself to do less and take rests when you need. But come back onto your right side and this time have the left knee bent in front and the right leg would be long. So it's the, the side um, of you facing the ceiling, the sky, which has the leg bent up in front, the left leg, right leg long, down underneath, and um, have the left arm draped along your left side. And what you're going to do now is bring your left shoulder a bit forwards and back. And it, again, we're just looking for a clarity in, in, in movements. So you can take the pressure off of making it a big movement. Yeah, just feel that left shoulder coming forwards and backwards. And again, seeing if you notice any stickiness in some places, and the next time, can you make it a bit smoother and easier? Still with the breathing, just happening on its own inside your torso, maybe even your belly. And then take a pause. And now, can you slide the your left knee and the left shoulder in the same direction? So bring it a little bit forwards and a little bit backwards. And can you bring them forwards and backwards the same amount? You feel how you're just rolling your torso forwards and backwards, right? over your right side. Yeah. So like this, you're not really twisting uh, in, your, in your torso and your spine. So now, pause, come back onto the right side so that the shoulders are stacked. And uh, now, can you move the left knee forwards at the same time the left shoulder goes backwards? And then vice versa. You bring the left knee backwards and then the left shoulder forwards and take your time with this. Yeah. And you'll feel that now you are twisting your, your torso gently in these two directions. Yeah. And so they're going in counter directions and see if everything in between your your neck and your pelvis can be soft. Yeah. 
easing into the movement. That's it. So now, see that you have your, your, your left shoulder. Can you just move it backwards? And now, just keep the left shoulder a bit backwards, and then slide your left knee a bit forwards and backwards. Yeah, so we're keeping the left shoulder just a bit backwards behind the right one. And then you slide the left knee forwards and backwards. See how that is. Is it easier to slide the knee forwards, the left knee forwards like this? And then change, bring the left shoulder forwards and keep the left shoulder forwards. And now slide the left knee forwards and back. And see, does this change? for your left knee, which direction it slides easier towards. And, and see how, how does, this might be a new feeling for many people. You're having the left shoulder forwards and then the left knee goes backwards. Yeah. And now go back to moving the shoulder and the left shoulder, left knee going in opposite directions. One forward, one back. Yeah. And teaching this to quite to quite a, a number of uh, classes it can be quite mysterious for many people so break it down you know you can really go slow and maybe you need to move one shoulder forwards and then you slide the left knee back and you go you break it down into steps yeah and then you can go back to moving them simultaneously in opposite directions and go a little bit faster Okay, and then rest. Take a rest on your back. So see, is it your ribs that you feel differently or has something actually changed in your eyes and maybe how your your legs feel so we're always working with the whole the, the whole system the whole person and maybe by focusing uh, somewhere else we actually see and experience um, a result that's uh, outside of what we expected. It's not as localized. So come onto your left side. Have the right knee bent up in front. So the top leg is bent up in front. The left leg is downwards, extended downwards with a straight, straight left leg, bent right leg. So the right knee and the right foot should be on the floor in front of your left leg, not touching, not touching it, and then not touching each other. And then the right arm is resting on your right side again. And now we go back to just the right shoulder forwards and backwards. Yeah. So see... We need time to clarify this image, the sensation of a gliding shoulder blade. And even where is it? Can you feel that when you bring the right shoulder forwards, that the shoulder blade actually slides further away from your spine and bringing the right shoulder blade backwards, it is sliding closer to your spine. And so this is really... A clarification, Feldman Christ is a clarification um, of how you use yourself. So we're taught so many things in school, but just to actually sense that you have a shoulder blade and to clarify how it's moving in relationship to your spine, to your ribs, your head, to everything else, that is really the learning that we're doing here. Yeah. how it can really help you use yourself to your maximum potential. Okay, so now can you 
move the right shoulder and the right knee forwards the same amount and backwards the same amount. And can this actually not only feel nice for your right side, which is moving, but you're also feeling nice in your head, your neck, and also the left side on the floor. Yeah. And so pause, and now bring the shoulder and the, the right shoulder, right knee in opposite directions. One goes forwards, one goes backwards. And you can start with a small movement at first, and then gradually make it bigger. That's it. Breathing. So seeing, can you use less energy for this? How can it actually help you to do this movement easier for you to actually gain more insight into how you move when you use less effort? And then go a little bit faster and see, can you sometimes switch, sometimes move the right shoulder and the right knee in the same direction and you're not twisting, and then sometimes move, it, move them in opposite directions so that you cultivate more and more your mastery, your control over yourself. How does your head respond? Does it stay with your face always forward? Does the head roll a bit? I'm, yeah. It's not about finding a right way or a wrong way, but many ways that are yours. So now stay on your left side. Can you extend your right leg long downwards? Have the left leg bent up in front, not touching the right leg, and keeping the right leg long, have the right ankle flexed again, can you now begin to uh, make that circle of the right heel, the inside of the right heel on the floor? So revisit this and see, has it become easier or even a lot easier? Are things in your whole body, neck, chest, head, all these things, are they more um, knowledgeable about how they fit into the, to this motion of the right heel? And then circle the right heel, slide it around in a circle in the other direction. Yeah. And how can you make this even easier, even creamier. Can you make a bigger circle and see what's happening to your right shoulder? Is there a circle happening there? For sure, the right hip joint is drawing a circle in space. If you were to, um, this might be the VR world, if you had a spot uh, attached to or indicating the right hip joint. And would you see it move in this three-dimensional space that also makes a circle? How about the weight shifting over your left ribs, the left shoulder, the left side of your head? How is that? Yeah. And then come and rest on your back. Take a short Rest. And when you're ready, come onto the right side. Extend the left leg down long. The right leg would be bent up. Flex in the left heel. Have the inside edge of the left foot on the floor. And begin making uh, the circles, painting these circles on the floor, sliding the left foot, the inside of the left foot in a circle along the floor, a few times in one way, a few times in the other way. And just have your head yield, respond to this movement. And if you 
slowly allow the movement to get more generous, become more generous. Can you notice even more how your neck is coordinating? How is that left shoulder moving? Is the left shoulder making the, is it moving together in the same direction as your left foot? Or does the shoulder sort of oppose the direction of the left foot? So once you've tried a few circles and, and yeah, so make it very yummy, juicy, pleasurable for yourself at this point. It's not about just analyzing, but allowing the movement to happen in your own way. So once you've had enough of that, take a final rest on your back. And just see what catches your attention first. Is it something, is it more length in the legs, in your back, in your shoulder? Are your shoulders more spread? Are you feeling the separate parts of you or do you sort of feel a whole, yourself as a whole? Or is, are you more aware of maybe your, state of mind, the state of your heart, rather than these isolated places of your body. And once more, gently roll your head right and left and see, is that different from when we first started? Is it easier, smoother? How do you breathe? So you can uh, take more time to rest because we did quite a lot. And uh, yeah, I will, when you are ready, I will ask that you, um, your listeners, roll through one side, find a very easy, lazy way to roll through one side, to come to sit, and then eventually to stand. But take your time because actually we moved um, a lot in the neck and some people could be feeling a bit dizzy, even nauseous. So just to give your nervous, uh, your nervous system some time to readjust, take your time, yeah, and don't rush up to stand. And when you are back in standing, just take a moment to stand and feel how you are. Is this different from before? How you recognize yourself in standing? And yeah. See, do your legs, yeah, what, what feels like wants to happen? Do you want to? Turn right and left with your body. Look around you, right and left. Is there, do you have more grounding? More sense of mobility, which doesn't exclude a feeling of stability. Do you feel taller, shorter? Yeah. Do you feel just in general? better, lighter, heavier. So take yourself on a walk, just go walk around and see how this has changed the way that you walk. And can you sense now how Walking is a, is a whole body thing. 
how's this different from your usual way of walking? Or maybe do you sense that your neck is easier, that your shoulders are also more restful? Yeah. So I'd say take two minutes um, because it takes time to feel different things, to even acknowledge what you're thinking, feeling, sensing. So let's take two minutes and then we can uh, chat. Mm -hmm. 